Today's video is about the NICOT system. And I already told you about the bits and pieces and how the system works. So this video has been a couple of times, a uh, couple of weeks in the making. I intended to just have a couple of weeks and show you just how swift everything can work. And well, that's not how it happened. So this video contains not just the introduction of the queen and into the hive, but it contains an introduction to two queens. I have um, a bank here and one or two that probably are queenless right here, so she's not happy. This video is shows you just the difficulty. I experimented and I thought maybe I won't show this, I'll cut it out, I'll do this, whatever, and make it a short, nice video. This video is on the longer side for me, and that's why. So let's get to it and I'll just begin the sequence. When we begin, we're, I'm going to show you how I put the queen into, or the nicot itself into a hive to be cleaned. And then I find the queen and put her in. The first queen that I put into the box is not the queen that actually ended up laying in the box. So that's part of it. And hopefully I will be putting chapters in, you know, given my time constraints and my other duties as an actual beekeeper. That will then show you how it all went. And then as today, I show you at the very end, I will show you just what did the builder think of what the night cot gave me. The hive. And she's down below because the night cot was put in with the brood. Queen has not been confined yet. So it's been way too many days. I've had rain, dark, cold, and then I had queens come up. So certain things take priority. But either way, the Nycot should be well into being cleaned up and ready for her to be confined. And being that the Nycot is full of pieces, you've got to make sure you kept your piece that you need to put back on. All pieces intact and ready to go. So first things first will be to take the Nycot out. And then I'll look for the queen. There it is. They started to build patties on both sides, worker size comb no less, and she laid in it. So this is really not a bad deal. It's gonna help her feel more comfortable. I'm not knocking that down. That's not a problem. I can show you. There's all her laid out. Nice little eggs. It's beautiful. Nothing in here because it's plastic and she doesn't really want to lay in there. But at least there's no nectar. And this side's brand new and I don't see, well I see an egg or something there, but for the most part they're just getting going.
So now it's turn for the queen. Put it to the side so you don't lose track of anything. There's eggs there, so I'm still assuming she's down below, even though she had free reign to go up into the hive. Super frame of pollen. So when I finally found her, she was in the second story, not in the first. She's in the second story, and she's laying, and there she is. So before I proceed to show you how to pick up a queen, first I want to just lay out my box and get it ready. So here's the box. And I want to close it up. And I will pop her in this little hole. There's no way in, no way out, except that hole, and this is the queen excluder. So when you go to grab a queen, you want to grab her by her thorax when possible. You can grab her by her wings, but wings can rip off. So you want to be as gentle as possible and it's easier if she's actually, if you grab her from behind. So you just reach in and grab her by her thorax and gently lift her away. Sorry. Uh, Got her by your thorax. Offer her your finger. And gently hold, hold down her leg and then the other legs. But push on her thorax so you're not really holding her by her legs. She can't twist, she can't run. You have her now by her thorax. And now we're gonna just pop her in the hole. There's the hole. There she goes. Head down. And in. And there she is, running around. Close it up. And there she is, in there. She's going to be in there about four days. They now see her. They want to take care of her. They're going to get in there and take care of her. And now it's the waiting game one more time for four days so that you can just pull the cells, put them on your graph bar, and we'll go on from there. Where does the bar go? Well, it goes right back where you had it. It goes down into the brood nest. She'll feel comfortable there. She's got her eggs right next door. And Hopefully, she'll lay in it. She'll start laying in it tonight because it's so clean that she can't help but lay. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Some queens refuse to lay in this nycot. In this particular instance, I wasn't going to give up because I was making this video 
so I left her in there. So I have now very old larva next to like one or two eggs, but nothing the size that I need. And I said they wouldn't cap, but they actually capped one or two. Where is it? There's a cap right there. So no, I let the queen out. I'm gonna try a different queen. Some queens just won't do what you ask and hopefully I didn't stress her too bad. They seem to be fine, but this is ridiculous. This is one of the problems of the Nycot is to get the queen to lay in there and you can't always do it. She had laid there and there when the Nycot was in for cleaning. So the scent was everywhere. But no, I had to release her. I'm gonna shake off the bees and try another hive. So here it is. The queen has been in here for at least four days. And for complete clarity, this is the second hive that I had to confine a queen in. I tried for two weeks with the other queen, both in and out and in and out, and she wouldn't lay. Some queens won't do this. It may not be anything that you're doing, but for whatever reason, they just cannot do this. This queen apparently has done fairly well. So I'm going to take it apart part and see just how well. So you never want to shake any of these bees off here. If anything, you brush. You can hold the Nycot up to the light and kind of see what they've been doing in there. Yes, I knocked it. The queen just went in her little chamber there. And here she is, right here. And she just went back into her chamber. is in and out she goes so she was fairly comfortable she has lots of workers in there with her and once I can get her out of there I'm going to brush the bees and try to get a good shot of what is actually in there and regardless I'm just gonna take what I can get and put it in a hot and in a builder there she comes She's already been under a lot of stress just being in this machine, this confine, confinement. So I'm just going to slowly flip it over. She may go out before I get the back off, but I'm going to take off the back. I don't see her anymore on that side. I 
And you can see that they felt like they were queenless even though she was in the hive. So they have all these little starts of queen cells, nothing to put in them. But, okay. So now I'm just gonna go get my brush and brush them off. So don't shake the bees off here. Make sure she's off and then brush them. If you brush her, hopefully she goes back into the hive. Don't be too gentle, you gotta just get them off. I don't know if you can see these. Some of them have little dots in them of royal jelly. They are just emerged. And if you have to, you have to get a set of goggles or something, some sort of jewelers. I use it for grafting. So if you use jewelers, if you use glasses, if you're younger, you have better eyes. And we'll see now. We'll take them off and put them in, in to the bar. And this is the bar. Yikes. And we're gonna see about taking and taking them into the builder. Okay, this here is a wet t-shirt so that it doesn't dry out. These things are very, very tender and so you don't want them to dry out just in the short time that you're working. Take your white receiver cup gently pull it off I got a nice there is an egg in there but there's also the royal jelly which also has a little larva so she laid twice in there I had her in probably five days So that's one. And probably what I'm going to do is just use one and transfer. And I do have a set of jeweler's glasses on so that I can see it. That was nothing. If you pull it and there's nothing, just set it to the side. We have about a hundred chances and hopefully she gave me, I'm just looking for 32. Yikes, that's just. And you don't want to jostle them too much. Come on. Ay, ay, ay. They're supposed to just come right up. That's fine. They like to stick. I don't want to jostle them too much. Just barely get them up. Maybe the receiver cup was giving me trouble. I don't know. Try a different one. That one went fine. Nice larva. I'm 
going to the other side. Let's see if we can recover the thing that I have. That's the thing. Turn over the flow. Use the tools and then provide the From the back, you can almost see the difference between a larva and an egg. If there's no royal jelly in there, it's probably an egg. For the ones that are already down, make sure you cover them as well because you don't want them just drying out on your bar. So both sides should be covered. So good. We're doing great with larva. Like I said, keep them covered. Even in my humid swamp. Again, see if I can get this to show you guys. in there. Yes, it's small. It's beautiful. So there, we just did 16 on that bar. We'll go to the next bar. I think I grabbed one or two eggs, which I will go back and get larva. system's probably on the average I don't know 10 years old so it may be a little warped if you have a brand new one it may work better as far as popping these out want to be careful when you hear that pop and that you didn't just knock them right out. That's why you brushed them. So I finished. I finished. They have larva and I have maybe two cells that I couldn't find, so I used eggs. And those eggs should be hours, hours away from emerging. So it won't bother me. So. Jeweler's glasses, they make things clear that are teeny tiny. Get yourself a pair. Now, we put them in the builder. Make sure 
We keep them covered. Doesn't matter how wet you think your yard is, keep them covered. Keep them covered. It'll make sure that you don't have these tiny little things that just dry out on you. And we'll walk over to the builder. My phone cut off somewhere in the middle, so I don't know where I lost it. But I don't have time to go back because time is of the essence when you have the bar and you want to get everybody in there. So, my builder is down below. You don't want your bar to shake, you don't want it to fall, you don't want it to anything. Those little eggs, the larva can be fall out, can move, and just it'll ruin your graft. You want to be as gentle as you can. Let me put my hood on. And I'll show you my builder. This is the builder. She's full, full. She's hopelessly queenless. And over an hour ago, I shook nurse bees in there. they'll have nothing to do but take every single one of those larvae and make something out of it. I have to be careful because so many bees. I have a feeder on there. So instead of actually taking the lid off, I'm just going to take the whole feeder off and hopefully not jostle them too bad. It's a full gallon bag. Same as any graft. It's heavy. Stinging me. I don't know why she has to sting me. I didn't do nothing mean to her. Come on. Okay. Here's the builder. Plenty of bees. She's got plenty of pollen. She's got a, a frame of pollen next to her. She's got some stores in there and I fed her and they're hopelessly cleanless. There better not be a rogue queen. I have double checked and re-double checked, but queens in a queen yard do fly in. So we pray that that doesn't happen. In your yard, it shouldn't. So now what do we do? We have the bar. And we let it float down in there. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Don't let it drop too hard. Get the bees out of the way. And that's that.
so that's that. They should start feeding those larvae. A queen larva is fed 1,600 times a day. She's got plenty of bees to do that. I do have rain on the way. That's why I'm feeding, even though that there are, there are a lot of wildflowers and trees still blooming. I'm not in my main flow. That's another month away. But they are definitely in building and swarm mode. I've had one swarm this year. This is what you want. The more bees you have, the better. Can you do it with less bees? Yes. You might want to cut down how many cells you put in there. And in four days, those cells will be capped. So just not even counting today. Today is Monday. Friday, they'll be capped. And seven days after they're capped, they will emerge. And until then, we'll, I'm going to come back. I'm going to wait on this video posting. I'm going to wait four days and see how many took. I might wait three days. So, the Nikon is a difficult task if the queen makes it difficult. Best practice with Nikon is that you feed the donor hive. Wherever the queen is, feed her so that they feel like they don't have to eat back all these things, all these larvae. That's one of the things. Two, some queens just won't do it. It's nothing you're doing. It's nothing that you can do about it. So if you only have one queen and she's not laying in that night cot, get yourself a paintbrush or some type of grafting tool that you want to learn and just start grafting and start learning it. Because it's very frustrating. I found myself very, very frustrated with this uh, system. I took her out. I saw some eggs laid. I took her out. I was feeding. She's got a great hive. No. So then I left her in too long and I had three or four that had really old larvae, but still no eggs, no tiny larvae. So I missed this weird window where five eggs that she had laid, they decided to feed five out of a hundred. That doesn't make any sense, but she's an old queen and she was stressed and she didn't like it. You know, we can't make them do everything we would like. But the Nikot, if you have more than one hive to try to, to graft from, to, to try to do a queen, it, it does give you a little bit of leverage. You don't have to touch anything except the queen. Uh, but each has its drawbacks. So we'll wait three days, see how good they were. They were good larvae. And now, actually, this part is really not the Nikot. And now this is the builder and you should know how to build the builder that's another video i think i have one this is day four we put the nikon in on monday this is friday the builder is rejoined with the mother hive she's no longer on a queenless state they're rejoining to be in a queen right state but they should either be capped or nearly capped right now. So I'm going to see just what they did. There's the bar. It looks like they had a really good take. 
but even under that curtain of bees may not be a cell. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. First bar was the best, which is this bar on the top. One, two, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's about a fifty percent take, which really isn't horrible. The bottom did some nice cells, which is the first run. So I did this bar first, that had the best larva, this was the second, but they chose to not take them. Obviously I had plenty of bees for them to do it. I didn't touch any of the larva. The larva was in the cell, they chose not to make the queen. That's Nycock. If you want to do NICOT, it will teach you what to look for. And really, 16 cells, 16 queen cells is nothing to sneeze at. It's a 50% take. When I graph, I go for a 75%, and I generally get 70 to 75%, sometimes better. I've gotten as high as like 90 something percent. That's not always what happens. 75 is good, 50% isn't bad. If you're going to do NICOT, it's an expensive little gadget, but it's worth it if that's what you're going to do. If you're not going to continuously raise queens, I suggest you just get yourself a grafting tool. It's a little bit cheaper, but this whole kit is what you're going to need anyway. So, throw in a few extra bucks. So, that's my Nikon, and 50% uh, take is not a bad take. It's not great as far as grafting, but really, if you take what you can get, if I had maybe left it in an extra day, uh, my frustration level was pretty high, and I toyed with saying, hey, you know what, this is my I hate the Nikon system. She's gonna hit me in the lips. This is my I hate the Nikon system, video holy so it's I don't hate the Nikon it can actually teach you something but it is frustrating especially because it's kind of where you have less control I as a graft person I now graft I say oh I can pick the grafts that I want I'm not waiting on a queen to hopefully lay and I have a builder waiting and I turn around and there's nothing to put in the builder. So I have a queenless builder, but I have no grafts put in it. So <clears throat> grafting itself allows you to control that part of the situation. Yes, please don't fly in my mouth. I think you can take as you will from this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like, maybe subscribe and hit your notification bell. And if you try this system, let me know how it goes for you. Everybody's different. Everybody has, you know, success. I hope, I mean, at the very least, if you try it and you get one queen, that's one more queen than you actually had four days ago. So until next time, happy beekeeping.